Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a mystery, drama, sci-fi film from 2016 titled Midnight Special. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Lucas and Roy watch a TV broadcast about themselves in a hotel. Lucas has put duct tape on the peephole in the door and they have taped all of the windows up with cardboard. Reporters are talking about how they have kidnapped a little boy and are now on the run with him. Roy decides it's time for them to leave. He goes to the bedroom where Alton is sitting with a sheet over his head, wearing goggles and using a flashlight to read a comic book. Lucas grabs their bags and Roy carries Alton out to the car. As they leave the parking lot, the hotel receptionist watches them and decides to report their car to the police. As Lucas and Roy drive down the highway, they use their police radio to learn that their car has been identified. They swerve off an exit and Lucas turns the headlights off. He puts on a pair of night vision goggles so he can see the road without any light. Three men watch the TV broadcast about Roy Tomlin and the leader of the group makes it clear to the others that they have four days to find Alton and bring him back. The man in charge leaves and steps into the next room. He takes his place behind the podium and addresses a crowd of about 200 people sitting in pews. He recites odd scripture based around dates and numbers. Outside, FBI agents gather around the building, most of them armed. They have brought several buses with them and surround the church. They make their way into the church building and interrupt the service. They speak briefly with the man giving the sermon, and he tells his community to listen to what the agents have to say. The agents tell the people that they have a warrant to search the entire ranch and that everyone who lives there will be escorted off of the property and taken to an old school where they will be questioned. While Lucas drives, he swerves to avoid hitting a car, but another car rams into it. Lucas stops to go check on the woman who was driving. She is unresponsive and when a police officer shows up, he tells him to call an ambulance. The officer recognizes them from the news and guns are drawn. Lucas has to shoot him in order to get away without making a scene. He uses his radio to report an injured officer and an injured civilian and make sure that help is on the way before they leave. The people from the ranch are unloaded from the buses and escorted into the school building. They are all categorized based on age and sex and given lengthy amounts of paperwork to fill out. The pastor is interviewed in a separate room by an FBI agent and Paul Sevier, who is from NSA. They ask the pastor about the scriptures they use and where they got this information. The pastor said he wrote all of them but got all of the information from Alton. Paul tells him that these scriptures contain classified government information. The pastor explains that Alton would sometimes speak in tongues and they would record what he would say. He also reveals that Roy is Alton's father. Roy and Lucas pull their car into Eldon's garage. He used to live on the ranch and he knows both Roy and Alton and wants to help them. Eldon has prepared a room for Alton and he goes to bed. Alton takes off his goggles and Roy puts noise-canceling headphones over his ears. In the kitchen, Eldon tries to explain some of the progress he's made recently with coordinates from the ranch's scripture, but Roy says he's too tired to hear it. He wakes up the next morning to the house shaking and Roy and Lucas run to Alton's room to see what's wrong. Eldon has looked into Alton's eyes and there is a beam of light connecting them. The room starts to crumble in and Roy bashes Eldon over the head with a lamp. The sunlight causes Alton's eyes to uncontrollably flash so Roy quickly takes him in the shadow and calms him down. Paul interviews several members of the ranch to try to gain a better understanding of their association with Alton. Paul learns that Alton can somehow show them visions and make them feel at peace by extending beams of light from his eyes. Alton used to cause things to break and it got worse as he aged. Eventually they let him sleep during the day and stay awake at night, which tamed his powers, so they moved their services to the evening. The people Paul interviews tell him that Friday, March 6th will be their judgment day and everything will be fine as long as they have Alton back before then. The agents decide to cut the interview short and pack everyone back on the bus and bring them back to the ranch. Two of the men, Doak and Levi, immediately run back to the ranch and retrieve a duffel bag from a secret compartment in one of the buildings. They get into a pickup truck and drive off. Roy and Lucas get ready to leave Eldon's house, and Roy ponders shooting Eldon before taking his van. On the drive, Lucas points out that Alton is looking weaker, but Roy assures him that he's fine. Alton starts speaking in Spanish and when they turn on the radio, they realize he's speaking the same words as one of the show hosts. They decide to stop at a gas station to get more supplies and so that Roy can use a payphone. They leave Alton in the car, but he senses something in the sky and leaves the car, walking out into the middle of the parking lot. Roy notices Alton out of the car and sees a woman approach him. He hangs up the phone and runs to them, shooing the woman away. He's upset with Alton but apologizes. Alton apologizes as well and points up into the sky. Flaming debris is coming down from the sky and striking the parking lot of the gas station and Roy picks up Alton and meets Lucas back at the car. They drive off, and Alton starts having a nosebleed, 
Roy comforts him. They arrive at Sarah's house, Alton's mother, and she greets them fondly. They go inside and she shows Alton some new toys that she's bought for him. Sarah tucks him in for bed that night and when she leaves Alton's room, she is confronted by Lucas and Roy. They talk about how Alton is getting weaker and Lucas wants to take him to a hospital, but Roy insists that they need to reach their location with him in three days and Sarah agrees with Roy. FBI agents meet at the gas station parking lot to assess the damage. Paul is told that a military satellite that was programmed to detect nuclear events was pulled out of orbit and the debris fell on the parking lot. Lucas pulls the van they took from Eldon's house around back and Sarah talks to him about his past. He tells her that he isn't from the ranch, that he was Roy's childhood friend until his parents moved him to the ranch. He hadn't heard from Roy until he recently showed up with Alton at his doorstep and asked for his help. Roy had Alton show Lucas the visions to convince him to help them. They all pile into Sarah's car and leave the house. While on the road, Sarah asks Alton about what happened at the gas station. Alton says that he pulled the satellite out of orbit on purpose because he could tell it was being used to try to track him down. Doak and Levi go through Sarah's home and find her car's registration. When they don't find her car outside and instead find the van, they search it to see if its registration is still inside. While driving Alton starts choking and coughing and light comes from his eyes. The light is so bright that it sets off the car alarm and they have to pull over. Alton crawls out of the car and into the grass beside the road and the grass around him dies. Alton tells them that they're being followed and that Sarah and Lucas need to take the car to a hotel room and Alton and Roy will meet them there by walking through the woods. Roy carries Alton through the forest and they come across a small cave with water. Alton lays down and Roy says they can stay there and wait out the daylight, but Alton insists that he is ready to be outside in the sun. Back at his office, Paul reads through the church's sermons and points the coordinates on a map and then cross-references them to the incident points associated with Alton. Paul is able to figure out where Alton is trying to go and alerts the rest of the team. Doak and Levi show up at Eldon's house since they were able to track the van's registration back to him. They question him about Alton and are able to get some information out of him. Roy and Alton walk out into a field in the woods and watch the sun come up. At first, the sun hurts Alton and he cries out and his eyes flash. Then his body explodes with light and he creates a small dome around them. They return to the hotel room that Sarah and Lucas have prepared and Alton explains that they saw a world, built on top of theirs, filled with people that he thinks are like him and who he thinks he belongs with. Alton looks completely restored and he is able to make his hands and arms glow. They get their things ready to leave the hotel, but as Lucas steps through the door, he is shot at. Lucas and Roy are restrained by Doak and Levi and they enter the hotel to restrain Sarah and kidnap Alton. Sarah frees herself and goes outside to release Lucas and Roy. They get their things together and head to the car, intending to chase after the truck that Doak and Levi left in with Alton. When they get onto the highway there is a large traffic jam. Roy drives the car onto the shoulder and speeds around the bulk of the cars but is stopped by military personnel and told to get back on the road. They wait in the traffic and eventually see helicopters overhead nearby and the abandoned truck that Doak and Levi were driving in. This gives Roy confirmation that the government now has Alton. Alton sits alone in a chair in a white observation room where a live feed of him is displayed on the other side of the observation glass where Paul and several other FBI agents are gathered. They try to question Alton, but he refuses to speak to anyone other than Paul, and only alone. The rest of the agents leave the room and Alton pauses the live feet of him sitting in the chair. Alton unlocks the door between Paul and the observation room and Paul approaches Alton. Alton tells Paul that he belongs in another world and that he needs Paul's help to get there. Alton's eyes start glowing and he fixes Paul with them. Roy, Lucas, and Sarah stand hopeless in a parking lot when all of the payphones start ringing. Roy answers one of them and hears Paul on the other line, who explains who he is and that he is Alton and wants to return him to Roy. Paul gives Roy a set of coordinates to meet him at and destroys the phone afterwards. Meanwhile Alton casually unlocks and starts a nearby car. They all meet at a spot in the woods and Paul returns Alton to them. He asks if he can come with them, but they say no, so he uses Lucas handcuffs on himself so he doesn't get into trouble for returning Alton. Under an overpass, Sarah and Alton are outfitted with bulletproof vests. They get in the car and start driving towards their final destination, although they know there will be several manned roadblocks along the way. When they begin approaching one of the stops, Roy instructs Sarah and Alton to get down in the backseat. Roy drives through the road spikes and past the soldiers. The airbags in the car go off, but they continue driving. They stop the car down the road and Sarah and Alton get out and run into the woods. Roy and Lucas drive away, followed by several military vehicles. Sarah and Alton run to a clearing and Alton stands in the middle of it, 
His eyes start to glow and the ground begins to shake and then large buildings and futuristic constructions are revealed to Sarah and everyone else under the large dome that Alton has created. Beams of light walk through the forest and reveal themselves as people who are a part of that world. They approach Alton and he smiles. The car Roy and Lucas are driving finally gives out and they crash, the car landing upside down with both men still inside. Alton says goodbye to Sarah and he disappears with the rest of the new world. Soldiers approach the overturned vehicle and apprehend Roy and Lucas. Agents interview Lucas about where Sarah and Alton might be but he tells them that he has no idea. The agents get frustrated and send in Paul to talk to him instead and they pretend they don't know each other. Sarah chops off her hair in a gas station bathroom and changes her clothes. Roy ends up in prison with wires attached to his head. As he looks out over the yard, his eyes start to glow. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.